know. Yeah, because some people are, you know, they they need to feel it for themselves. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because if you love somebody, the last thing you want is for them to experience this and be like, oh, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, like a lot of, I feel like even, especially as an artist, like a lot of your friends and your family, they don't understand what you're going through mentally. No, no, not at all. Because from the outside, it looks like, like, oh, he's being distant. But it's like, bro, like, I'm an artist. Like, I'm a loner. Like, I don't do nothing. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. I'm chilling in a crib with his shorty. (laughs) That's it, bro. And And to be honest, for me, I can tell you, like, from my perspective, I'm chilling with my girl or whatever the case it's because that's what keeps me from thinking about all the bad shit in my life. Mm-hmm. That was my zone out. Some people smoke to zone out. Some people drink to and zone out. And that could out. be a dangerous trap. 100%. As, as we 100%. know. 100%. So it's like, for me, it was with my girl. I'm not thinking about nothing else. Yeah. I mean, and that's why I was by myself. Because it, was, it wasn't for, it wasn't that personal. It wasn't not loving nobody. It wasn't not wanting to hang out with my people. It was just like, I'm not in that position to do that. I can't, I don't, I don't got a job. I don't got a nine to five. Every time I get a nine to five, I got to quit because I got to show I mean, and it's a lot to intake, you know, and coming from the outside, everybody doesn't realize that because it doesn't mm-hmm. look like that. It looks like, oh, you're growing and you're leaving everybody. And it's like, bro, no, I'm not like, yeah, I'm working like, hard. Like, yeah, I'm dying. Like, literally, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. literally killing myself. Like, there, there's, the, I, in, in these last eight years, I've seen my parents maybe a total of 21 days in the last eight years to this Damn. date. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it ain't because I wanted to be that. It's because I have no choice. I can't take a day off. Yeah. I don't have a day to go up. Yeah, That's consistency like, oh, you, is such oh, a big oh, you, thing. You travel, you travel, and you know, I'm like, bro, I'm traveling and I'm sleeping on somebody's couch so that I can work. Yeah. That's not yeah. a vacation. No, not at you know all. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's a, that's a <clears throat> yo, you got a all or nothing. Yeah. Did, and you, I think, did you know what I did to, to get this plane ticket? To get here? <laughs> did you know what I sold? Did you know I sold my sneakers? I saw, I, did you know I only had three pairs of jeans for four years? You know what I'm saying? But I never complained about it. I just smiled. Yeah, and made believe everything was straight. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I, I, I was like I was going to college, messing with a hundred girls, and then I'm sleeping on a dorm room couch in my boy's room because I have nowhere to live. Mm-hmm. And all of those girls are back <clears throat> in that same room partying, and I gotta wait for them to leave the party for me to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? But they don't. You know, it, it, it's not from the outside. It's like, oh, are you good, man? It's like, no, I'm really not good. Mm-hmm. You know They're like Oh I've had so many people Tell me Oh you could have just Moved with your parents I'm like how Yeah My parents moved To North Carolina My I have three younger brothers My mom and dad Moved with two of my brothers And they got a two bedroom So you wanted me To move with my parents And sleep in one room With my At the time Six year old And twelve year old brother As an eighteen year old In yeah. one room That was <clears throat> about The size of this room It It wasn't meant For me to be there Mm-mm well, no, even when I, so I had to move on for a little bit mm-hmm. when I was in between jobs once. And uh, I remember feeling the pressure of, because I got an 11-year-old little sister, mm-hmm. right? Love to death. She's old enough I could be her father, right? right? So I play like this pseudo role of father slash big brother. Right. And even I would get a little bit overwhelmed at times walking into the house th- thinking that like every day I needed to be... This, the, this this armor and show, exactly. them, show them my example. Yeah. But you're not in a position that you don't feel mm-hmm. like you can be the example right now. Yeah. Because everything And then what wrong. do you do? You distance and then, yourself. Yeah. And then that's what ends up happening. And so it's not a even, lot of it's not even on purpose that. either. Mm-mm. It's like, it's not on purpose at all. It's like, yo, like, I'm fucked up and I'm known for being the person to motivate everybody. Yeah. And right now, I don't feel like I can motivate anybody because I don't feel it. I need mm-hmm. help right now. Yeah. But I can't tell you that because if I tell you that, then... I just showed you a weaker person and I was your motivation. So what are you going to do if you see that I gave up? Yeah. And that's how I, I, I used to, oh, I actually wrote a verse about that. You know what I'm saying? What because, was it? Oh uh, man, I, I honestly don't even remember it all <laughs> the way. Good, I know yeah. I have it in my, in my phone. Like it was recently. Um, but it's like, man, like that's a huge, that was a huge thing for me mm-hmm. because you know, I have so much of my people that do believe in me. And like, I was the reason why they believed enough to move past certain stuff. So it's like, if I show you that I'm not, I'm not that person, what yeah. am I? What am I doing as a as a trickling effect to my people? I mean, they meant more to me than myself. Yeah, let alone so if like, they could understand. Exactly, you know, that's always exactly. the next biggest yeah. battle. Yeah. Like, could they? You know, I've I've had those days where shit's just all completely wrong. Mm-hmm. And even if you think of like your five closest friends, like one of them is so far from that perspective that right. they're just not going to be able to take. And next thing you know, you go through your phone and like, I don't have no one to call, right? right? I'm right. the one everyone hits up right. to go through the deep shit, to help right. them out of it and to inspire and motivate and them and to and move. That's a, and that's a big, that's a big role. You yeah, it's a big role. But, but 
it's for a reason. Mm-hmm. You mean God wouldn't put that on you for no reason? I was just gonna you know say so God like, gives His favorites like, a hard time. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's just like, all right, cool. So let me get back right. Yeah. Because I need to be right because my people need to be right. So I gotta be right. Mm-hmm. No excuse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I'm not gonna give them no excuse. You know I mean like so I'm I'm gonna just figure this out. And that's like how I've always been. You know I mean I always was like, all right, cool. I'm at a wall. All right, let me figure this out. Yeah. Let me figure something out. Even if it's something I don't want to do, I'm gonna try to figure out a way to do that just so. Everything else could be right because your peace of mind is like a huge thing when you're doing music. Oh, if you huge. have no peace of mind, it's hard to even write. Yeah, creative and, and, space. And and, and 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 like that's another thing. Like a lot of people don't realize that. Like if you don't have peace of mind, how could you write a story? Yeah, no. And, and make it something that other people could relate to. I mean, that's what I was thinking about when you were saying, "Oh, just go move back in with your parents." Yeah. I mean. Like, as an artist, you definitely understand you have a creative zone. There's a lounge in that studio for a reason. You you never know. know, You just never know when it's going to hit you. Mm -hmm. And that's really the thing. I mean, I never used to be able to write in in the uh, studio because I used to write in my car. Everything. Because it was just like my My, my space. Me too. I I was just just telling Nick yesterday, I have very few places that I feel as comfortable as I do in the driver's seat of my life. Exactly. So I would just sit in the car for hours and just work on music. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, you, you know, bump it. everybody else feels like, even if you have a girl, you know what I'm saying? They might be like, oh, why are you not in the house? And it's like, yo, this has nothing to do with us. I'm literally, this is just my creative space. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, sometimes I wake up out of my sleep and write a whole verse like straight through. Like every bar came to my head. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it wasn't even, it was like random. Like I just woke up and I was just hearing this and I just wrote it out. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> let's, let's see if they want to talk about it. <laughs> no, nah, but um, so yeah, like man, like I really tried to like focus in on that because I knew, I just knew that I had a purpose for this. Like mm-hmm. I knew, like, and, and that's why music has always meant so much. You more always to me. felt that way, right, man? Like, like I've it's, always it's, ever it's, since it's, a little it's weird kid. Because deep from, down, from a kid from a kid, I mean, like I was a straight A student my whole life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and I'm not saying I was the best kid in the world because I wasn't. But when it came to school, I was a straight A student, and it wasn't even on purpose. It was just. I guess I was a smart kid. Like I don't, I don't even know. You crave you know learning. Like it's like I always was there. I was always right there. Like anybody that ever talked about me, they're like, "Oh, he's gonna be something." I don't know what, but something. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's gonna be something. So it, it kind of tripped out because like I remember a couple years ago having a conversation with my dad, and I was like, "Man, like it's crazy. Like I make majority conscious music over the clubs, <clears throat> and I felt like I always needed to tell people my stories, and and." You know, show them that they can do something as well. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I felt like at that time when I was going through it, I didn't have anybody to really tell me that and make me think like, oh, this is reality. This is real. You know what I'm saying? So like, I wanted to paint that picture for them. And I was like, it's crazy because like, my dad's a pastor and he could preach to certain people. And those people, a majority, they already decided like, hey, I want to make a change in my life. I'm going to go to church. Yeah. But the people out here in the street, mm-hmm. if they anything, don't make those changes. It's a one eighty difference. It's, yeah. it's, they hear they hear music, they hear and they subconsciously get it. Yeah, you know I mean like they might not even be in the church at all, but they might hear J Cole say something that was something that could have been said in church that was like, or it could have been said by anybody that would have motivated you, mm-hmm. and they hear it in a different way, or from somebody they think looks cool, and then it hits, and it hits them, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh whoa, he said that, oh yeah. I could do that, whoa. Yeah, I mean, Drake said started from the bottom. Now I'm here. Like, oh, I started from the bottom too. I could be here. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's stupid if you really think about it. <laughs> it's but simple. At yeah. the same time, it's like that's a that's a that's a whole nother like pointed appointed position. 